Nurses at RWJ University Hospital are starting week five of a strike that started in early August. The nurses demanding better staffing ratios and increased pay from their employer, which is part of the RWJ Barnabas Health System. That is an underwriter of NJ Spotlight News. But with no deal in sight, the nurses today have now lost their health insurance coverage through the hospital. I'm joined now by president of the nurses union, Judy Danella, to give us the latest. Judy, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Now, as of today, uh, this is the beginning of week five of your nurses' strike. Also today, your health insurance coverage is stopped by the hospital and your nurses now need to pay for coverage through COBRA. Just explain what's happening there. Correct, our benefits ended 9-1, um, 12-01, and the nurses now are without insurance. They can take a supplemental plan by the USW, which is a basic plan or we can COBRA our benefits if we have medical issues, or we can go through the open market and say an Obamacare type of plan. So we can use either of those, but the hospital, which is a self-insured program, has cut off our benefits. Judy, is that something you knew going in? We did not, no, we did not. Um, the hospital is going to say we did. I can 100% say we did not know that these benefits would end on September 1st. Uh, when we went on strike in 2006, they covered our benefits throughout because, again, they're self-insured, so they own the policy and can do what they want. We did not know. Now, the hospital is saying that they've taken many steps to avoid getting to this point, to avoid a strike, including agreeing to some of the staffing and compensation demands made by the nurses' union. They say that they had signed a memorandum of agreement with the union that they say the union never presented to the members. Is that true? And if so, why was that not presented? If you look or see any of our members, we gave out to every member that walked in that door the tentative agreement. It was definitely, definitely presented as a tentative agreement. We presented it. The members voted it down. The members did not like... We have guidelines. The hospital has to be penalized for the guidelines if they're not met with the uh, staffing ratios because what they put into effect is the same thing we've had in place for 10 years with no enforcement. So we wanted an enforcement. Therefore, the enforcement is where the members voted it down and they continue to penalize a nurse that calls out sick. So Judy, just to clarify, you're talking about enforcement if the hospital does not meet state required staffing ratios? That's correct. Nurses get sick being a bedside nurse. So they wanted to penalize the nurses for that. So what is the solution? How do you move forward from here? What needs to happen for there to be resolution and get these nurses back to work, back to having salaries, back to having health insurance? I think the mediator has to call us together and both of both sides have to come through with a serious proposal. We gave a proposal on August 16th and the hospital rejected it. They never came back with a counter proposal. We're waiting on them to come back with a counter proposal. It seems like they're not going to come back with a counter proposal and that's where we stand. Very quickly, what are the sticking points for you that need to happen right now to get your nurses back to work? Pretty much remove the sick call penalty and um, what's called the core deficit. And I think that that would solve the problem very quickly. Judy Danella, president of United Steelworkers, Local 4200. Thank you so much.